Today, we're making Swedish meatballs with quinoa. One of the best things about this recipe is it bulks up our ground beef protein, right? And so a great way to utilize quinoa is to put it in things. And you're gonna notice throughout this cookbook, we're going to put quinoa in many different um, things so we can make it one time. So kind of the beauty of this is I already have some quinoa made, it's already portioned out. So the big approach to this is when you're making quinoa, you're making pasta, rice, what have you, make a larger batch of it. And so that way it's just ready for you, okay? So we have some lean ground beef here. We've got our quinoa already cooked. We have some panko breadcrumbs, our ketchup, an egg. We're gonna slice up some green onions. Um, and I've got salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. One thing I wanna kinda mention too is you always wanna make sure you're using garlic powder, not garlic salt because then we're just adding more salt to it. So always look for like a granulated garlic or a garlic powder. So from there, I'm just gonna kinda put this to the side and we're gonna slice up some green onions here. And really you can use, honestly, the whole thing of this green onion. So I usually just kinda take the root off or the tentacles and then I'm just gonna make sure I slice it really nice and thin. Um, you don't want huge um, chunks in here because we wanna be able to form the meatballs um, with no issues. And if you notice, I'm using more of the back of the knife because I have more power and I have more control here, okay? So really just kind of getting some really nice fine slices of our green onion. And we really can use the whole stock. And as you know, the flavor gets a little bit more milder as we go up, but it still has great flavor and great use. All right. So we could take it one step further and chop this just a little bit more. And I'll do that. I'll just chop this a little bit more. So that's why it's extremely important to have um, a chef's knife instead of a paring knife. What's so beautiful about this recipe truly is that we can make a large batch of these meatballs and we can have them all seared, put some in the freezer, and then have some in the refrigerator or finish them off for um, dinner. So what it does is if you're cooking for one, or if you're cooking for four, it's kind of the same approach, right? You just kind of divide it differently. So maybe you would double the recipe then to kind of spread out your meatballs for another meal. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put in my green onions. Now, obviously, um, in this recipe, it might say six green onions. It really depends on the size. So if they're really small, you might need more than six. If they're really big, you might need three or four. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. So from here, I'm just gonna start throwing in um, some of my other ingredients. So we've got the panko, and then we've got our quinoa. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my, my kosher salt already pre-measured out. And kind of something interesting to, to know about the kosher salt is you're just gonna kinda get more bang for your buck essentially. So iodized salt is fine, but you're gonna get more flavor with less with kosher or sea salt. So that's kinda why we picked that. And then we have some um, ground uh, black pepper. And then we're gonna measure out our garlic powder. So just a half teaspoon. And by all means, you can certainly use fresh, but if you're trying to kind of maybe skip a step or try to hurry the process, powder's just fine. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and start kind of breaking this up a little bit. And again, by adding this quinoa, what it's doing is it's giving us a good amount of volume, right? So it's taking our portion of, of, of beef, um, making it seem like it's the same size, but it's a little bit less. So if you're trying to kind of cut back on your red meat consumption, this is a great way to do it. And honestly, I also um, recommend using like a red quinoa. And especially if you're making like chili, um, putting red quinoa inside the chili works really well too, because you know it's in there, but it gives, it, gives you a lot of bulk. All right, we've got this kind of nice and broken up a little bit. Now it certainly can use your hands if you'd like. All right, then we're gonna throw in our ketchup. This is gonna add a little bit of sweetness to it. And our egg, we need to bind. Like so. So 
So while um, we're about to finish mixing up our meatball mixture, I've got this preheating. It's so vital to make sure that we're preheating our pans before we're actually cooking. So when it comes to healthy cooking, we wanna make sure we rely on the natural cooking process to drive flavor essentially. So we wanna get that sear on it. So if we put our items into a cold pan, we are not gonna get that sear. We're not gonna get that mallard effect, that browning. So that's why it's so important. So I'm preheating that. I've got my canola oil on the side. And so while it's doing that, I'm gonna to continue to mix this up really well. Make sure we get the flavors evenly distributed as much as possible. And then you can do a couple things. We could easily um, use a little um, portion scooper to make our little meatballs. You can do it by hand, um, especially if you're trying to kind of get the, the right amount of volume out. Uh, portion scooper is usually easier. Um, another kind of interesting um, thing you can think about with this recipe is you could also almost kind of turn this into like a meatloaf as well. Um, but kind of the sky's the limit. Okay. So I think we've got a pretty good mixture here. It's not too wet, not too dry. All right, so from here, what I'm going to do is put our uh, canola oil in our pan. All right, and you can always do kind of a tester. And I'll honestly tell you, one of the things that I've always done when I'm doing like recipe testing and, and seasoning, you can always take a small amount of your meat mixture and sear it in the pan until it's fully cooked and then taste it. So if for some reason you're not sure if you've added enough or maybe you used a pound and a quarter of beef, then a pound, that can kind of offset your seasonings. So it's always good to do a little bit of a taster um, just to make sure. But I did weigh out our meat so you don't have to do that. So I've got my little scoop uh, and so what I can do is just kind of portion it in my hand. We can do a, um, a tray, a plate of our meatballs and then kind of put it all in once. But I'll just do a few here. And you can always um, kind of like refreeze this as a, as a large um, amount, but I honestly think it's always better to just have it already done. So I would say usually like our serving is going to be about three meatballs if we're kind of falling around those four or five ounces. Okay. And if you always want to test to see if your pan is hot enough, you can take a little bit of water onto your fingertips and sprinkle it in and see if it's hot. I will also add this to it as well. If you can have a good quality nonstick pan, that is also going to be helpful to use a lot less oil in the pan. So think of it this way. When we have less oil in the pan, we're going to lower our heat a little bit. So that's going to be the, the biggest change. If you're used to cooking on super high heat, um, you're not going to be able to do that when you use uh, smaller amounts of oil. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're gonna hear that sizzle. And that's what we're looking for. We want that nice sizzle. So this small amount of oil should be able to um, sear most of these meatballs. The other part to this too is you wanna make sure that you're not moving it too frequently, but frequently enough that it's not going to like overcook, right? So we wanna have a kind of a good slow rotation. A couple ideas you can think about is if you're like, well, this is going to take a really long time. What you can do is kind of sear the meatballs on all this, you know, just kind of get all, a sear all throughout on the outsides and then take them off, put them on a baking sheet and you can finish the cooking. And the internal temperature that you're going to be looking for is 155 degrees. Um, if you are going to be reserving this for a future meal, just simply searing it all the way on the outside, letting it completely cool and then you can freeze it. That'll be an excellent way for having a, a meal really quick when you get home. So you can just pull it out of the freezer, cook it at a high temperature, and finish that cooking process. So now that I have them nicely seared, um, what I'm going to do is put them on a little baking sheet and I'll finish um, cooking them to the final internal temperature. Um, and as the recipe says, it'll be to 160 degrees. And what you can do is cook them to 155 and then let them carry over cook to 160. That way when they're at 160, you know they're not carry over cooking even more. Uh, what, you, what you don't wanna have is really dry meatballs. So it's really important to make sure that we kind of get, get them to the point um, where they work best and they're nice and soft and tender. So about 155 is perfect and then they'll carry over cook. So we got our meatballs and I will just put them in the oven. 
So here we are, we have our meatballs all set and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of scoop one up here, cut it in half. It's perfect. We've got a nice, soft, even maybe slightly crumbly texture to it. Um, but this is gonna have a really nice flavor and I might as well just take a little sneak peek. It's good. So what I wanna kind of wrap up here is looking at this um, style of adding the quinoa to the beef, um, we're gonna put this into our, um, our Southwest taco salad. Um, but there's other ways that you can do these meatballs too, is we can make these a little bit smaller and put them into like a soup. We can do that meatloaf. We can stuff a pepper with this instead as well. Um, we can change up sauces too. In the book, we have a recipe for like a brown gravy. Um, if you wanted to go completely untraditional, you could try like a teriyaki sauce as well and do it with rice. I mean, there's so many options that we can um, kind of play with this recipe. Um, but what's really nice about it is this is a very efficient recipe, not a ton of ingredients, really good flavor, and kind of straight to the point. Thanks for joining me today, making our Swedish meatballs with quinoa. So good. <laughs>